So, as you just have heard, I'm a scientist. But I'm also a human being. So I will age and I will die one day. Not today and hopefully not tomorrow. But one day I will be dead. And I always told myself, if I can live up to 90 years, be healthy, happy, brain function is alive, and I'm gonna die on the day after my 90th birthday, I'm the happiest person on this planet. And then I started thinking about it, you know, if I can stay healthy until 90, and maybe I could stay until healthy until 100, why would I wanna die, you know? There's so much things to do. And this is what got me thinking. I love trains, train stations, public transportation. I really like it. And there's a construction site for high-speed train tracks close to where I live. And now they cover the fences to the construction site with infotainment. That's the new thing, you know, if you walk through. And they displayed novel train concepts of the future, like this one, that also hyperloops on display and all of that everything futuristic. And then I started to think, my gosh, I would like to see which one of the concepts will come true in a couple of years, maybe in 50 years. And I would like to see that. I would like to stay alive and know which train I'm gonna ride in 50 years. And I also like, oh, this is, I also like rockets, really rockets, okay. So I would like to see rockets flying people to Mars. I really like see that. Okay, same thing. And also, as you know, I'm a scientist. I really would like to see what science brings us in the next couple of years, you know. Still my curiosity and, and, and be able to experience that. And if I could hold on to my health, would I not want to be longer around the people I really love, that I cherish, maybe even also the people that challenge me? And I think we have all that in common. There's something about future, in the future, that we would like to see, encounter, feel, or be with, that has meaning to us. And that would be worth living for longer if you could do that in good health. So Mother Nature is actually pretty cool. She starts to fulfill in part these dreams already. So the demographic development tells us that a lot of people will become more than 100 years old in the next couple of decades. And the new normal will be that on average, people will become 90 years old. And the good thing is you don't have to do anything about it. It just happens. That's how the demography works. Mother Nature also forgot a small part, a small piece in the whole equation. Usually, she does not allow us to age in good health. So you know all about these diseases that people get when they get older. Like my grandmother, or even recently my, my mother. Um, that's not good. And you all know loved ones, yourself, that come down with these diseases and how much pain that is, and how much quality of life is not delivered. So, is then this concept of becoming old and healthy, staying healthy, just a fantasy? Or is there something real to it? Can we do something about it? So, my interest in this research, aging research or anti-aging research, started when I was already a student. So, all living organisms are made out of small autonomous units, they're called cells. Everybody I'd heard, might have heard about them. And these cells, different type of cells, form together organs, tissues, and they are all human beings. And at that time I was interested if we could make young cells from young people even younger. Can we build time machines for cells? And I still remember that very moment, sitting at my desk, looking at an autoradiograph with certain bands on it, that's how scientists do that, and a certain pattern told me, yes, it is possible. It is possible to make young cells younger. 
And although at that time, again, was only young cells making younger, it got me ho hooked on this topic. I think we can build time machines for cells. So when I became an independent researcher, I then started to dream about the ultimate time machine. Can we make aged cells younger? Can we really achieve that? Can we build time machines that are able to do so? And I decided to focus on a very specific type of cell, which is called stem cell, somatic stem cell. Why is that so specific or so special, a stem cell? Our body consists out of 30 trillion cells. That's a 10 with 13 zeros. These are a lot of cells. And every day, you, me, you, me, lose 200 billions of these cells due to attrition. It's primarily blood cells, skin cells, and skin cells in your intestine. They're just worn out. We don't need them anymore. And it's dangerous to keep them longer in the body. And they need to be replaced. 200 billion, it's a 10 with 11 zeros. How do we actually do that? So Nature invented also a very clever system. It's called the stem cell. Um, that allows us to do that healthy, happy, and not with the dangers come usually from other systems to do so. Stem cells do only bear the information to make all of these cells that we're gonna lose, these blood cells or this immune type of cells. And they pass on this information and give the duty to daughters and sons of them that then multiply very rapidly and replace all of the cells gone. But these other daughters, they also have a finite lifespan because making this replication very often can be dangerous. You can get cancer at the end. So the stem cell keeps the information and manages the system. It's the manager of the tissue. The work is done by others, but keeps the manager happy and healthy for a very long time. And initially people thought that means pristine for forever. It would mean, although you're 60 or 50, your stem cells are still 20 and 30. And that was wrong. Also, your stem cells start to age. They change their function over time, and they cannot manage the system anymore. So for these blood-forming stem cells, that has real consequences when they become older. They also make all the immune cells. That means when you get older, you get more infections. You're getting more likely the flu, and it's much more difficult to get rid of the flu, and there's still a lot of elderly people just die from flu and complications on top of it. You also will more likely get cancer, blood, blood cancers when you get aged. Do you do stem cells? Pro not working properly anymore. And there's even new research, that's just very exciting, that would imply that Problems with the heart when you get older are due to problems to your stem cells in the blood that form the blood. So there are real consequences and it looks like that aging of stem cells seems to be in the way of healthy aging. So why do stem cells age? How we can explain that they age? Cells consist of a lot of units, parts. They are very complicated entities. Within a cell, we have probably 100,000 different units. DNA, RNA, proteins, lipids are they called. And they usually come in multiple copies. That means a cell has probably one million parts in itself. One million. A car, for example, has only 30,000 parts. And these parts in the cell form larger units, machines. They are very critical to, for example, generate energy for a cell, or make new machines that make proteins for a cell, or help you to protect your genetic information, or make this genetic information accessible. So the structure and order of these machines and all the parts in the cell Working together is very critical, pivotal, for a stem cell to function correctly. It's like shown here. 
This is a stem cell, that's real life data from the laboratory. The red one is one piece of a machine, the green one is one piece of a machine. They have order and structure. It's like real life, correct? <laughs> Should be, at least sometimes. Okay, good. Now, over time, what happens to the stem cell? Why it's becoming aged? Why it's not functional, not management anymore? And the most obvious happens. It will start to put disorder into the system. Okay? So it's not that parts are damaged, it's just that they don't find a place anymore where they belong to. And again, it's like real life, correct? <laughs> okay, I can show you. That's not, oop. Then the cell, the parts are all over. That's also real life data. Okay? You see green is everywhere, red is everywhere. Okay? Disorder. And that's sometimes like my office. <laughs> and you mean over time, precisely that happens. You start, your books are everywhere, you cannot organize anything anymore. If somebody comes in and asks you, where is the math book? You don't know anymore, correct? So while you're still able to do the managing function, probably in part, like stem cells will do when they age, you will take a lot of more energy to get the system going, and you definitely will m make more mistakes, like aged stem cells do. Now, you also learned I'm in a messy, correct? I just told you that. So, and in that, I would not be able to manage my laboratory very well anymore. Okay. And it turned out within aged stem cells, there's also the messy person. It's called a protein, a messy protein, and we gave it a name, CDC42. You don't have ever to remember that. But the important part is, it turned out, that's not becoming lazy when the stem cell gets aged. Not lazy and not disorganized. It's become hyperactive. That's the interesting part, hyperactive upon aging. Okay? It cannot focus on stuff anymore. It's doing this, 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 and this. And that's also like real life, correct? So we have people running around doing a lot of things. At the end of the day, nothing is done. <laughs> right. Luckily, collaborators developed a drug, a compound, that is able to tame the hyperactivity of this protein. It's like yoga for stem cells. <laughs> and then, and then, really, it settles down to the level of a normal active protein. And then the real magic happens. That's not, yeah, so this is the magic part, okay. <laughs> when the protein gets settled in again, even if the stem cell is aged, it starts to restructure itself again. All the books put on shelves again, all the machines seem to reassemble and work together again in a very proper function. So you can switch from this disorder to order just by using this drug. And you regain also the useful function of the stem cell. So for example, it will now produce better immune cells again, although it's old, and will allow you to fight infections better. And this is probably the first way that biology can support healthy aging. Now, this finding, it's a small one, I think, in research, but has broad implications for whole biology. And that would mean aging is a very simple process initially. It's like organization, disorganization, and you can put that back. It's not irreversible what happens upon aging. And you can target it by certain biological mechanisms, in this way a drug, and it's not only lifestyle or exercise that can help, help you to become this healthy aging person. That means it's not a one-way road, and we can profit from that. So healthy aging is worth pursuing. It's not a fantasy in the head of a couple of people. Mother Nature, biology, would allow us to do that. And 
data I've shown you is from the mouse, but it's also clear that this might work for human beings, and at the end allow healthy aging for human beings. And that might mean that maybe our children or our grandchildren will be able to see self-flying cars or people taking extended vacation on Mars because they can hold on to their health and see all of that in their lifetime. In the meantime, though, I will keep dreaming about fancy trains, <laughs> hanging out with my great-grandchildren, and will not stop, though, to work on finding ways to reorganize stem cells that, at the end, will, based on research today, allow us to have healthy aging for our children or grandchildren. Thank you. <laughs>